Warm greetings to you for this service during which we commemorate the first Sunday after the Epiphany and the baptism of our Lord. Our service is found in the Book of Common Prayer beginning on page 355, and I encourage you joyfully to join with me and with others who also will be viewing this video. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the River Jordan, proclaimed him your beloved Son, and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Our first reading is from the Old Testament book of Isaiah. Chapter 42, beginning in verse 1. Here is my ser servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I've called you in righteousness. I've taken you by the hand and kept you. I've given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. That is my name. I give my glory to no other nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 29 is found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 620, 620 invite you to join with me in saying it out loud. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. 
the Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. A reading from the book of Acts, chapter 10, beginning in the 34th verse. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem, they put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify, testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. May all that is said and all that is heard be in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Decade after decade, for the longest time, in survey after survey, Denmark has ranked as the happiest nation in the whole world. The nation of five and a half million people the land that produced Hans Christian Andersen and his fairy tales, the people who consume herring by the ton, has consistently beat the rest of the world when it comes to happiness and contentment. And it's hard to figure out why. I mean, as one TV commentator said about the survey results, the weather is only so-so than -so their neighbors, the Norwegians are wealthier, uh, their other neighbors, the Swedes, are healthier. So why has Denmark been at the head of the, the head of the list year after year? Well, that question intrigued Professor Kare Christensen at the University of Southern Denmark. Interviewed for CBS's 60 Minutes, he said, "If you ask people on the street where they think the happiest country in the world is, they'll say." Tropical islands, places like Italy or Spain, places with nice weather and good food. Christensen and a team of researchers found, though, it's kind of the opposite. What we figured out, he said, is that although the Danes, the Danish people, were very happy with their life, when we looked at their expectations, they were pretty modest. In other words, I guess they're happy because they start out with such low expectations. One interviewer, an analyst, asked a Dane if, if he thought folks from other countries should move to Denmark, and the, the guy said, no, I'm afraid that when they get here, they'd be disappointed. I share all that to raise a question about expectations. Sometimes we need to take joy in the little things and the modest blessings, and that's good. And maybe the Danish people are on to something there, not expecting too much. Here today, when we're still very new to 2023, are you looking ahead, wondering what the year is going to hold? Maybe afraid, hopeful, maybe combination of both. For some, low expectations, though, may lead not to contentment, but to discouragement. And given our human condition, our unfortunate attraction to evil and violence as a human race, there is reason to be sober. People get sick. We get sick. Wars grind on. We get into conflict with those we love, maybe those we love the most. But today is a great day on which to have our hopes refreshed, for it's epiphany. That word literally means revealing, manifestation. It can mean appearance, something, someone showing up, because we live in a world that has experienced a miraculous visitation. 
That's a lot of what we're celebrating. In, in some other countries, Epiphany is a bigger deal, a festival day observed with great celebration, remembering the wise men from the East, the Magi who come in Matthew's story to visit the, the one born King of the Jews. They came following a star. And this first Sunday after Epiphany, that only has to do with celebrating Jesus' coming, his appearing, his incarnation. It also focuses on the baptism of Jesus, which is why this Sunday in our liturgical calendar is called the first Sunday after the Epiphany and the baptism of our Lord. It makes sense to highlight his baptism because his baptism was a revealing to the, to the public. It was, it was a, a kind of a public launch in a big way, in a modest way, of his ministry. And here it is also that we see something miraculous indeed about his coming. And I don't mean the miracles, the shepherds and the angels that, that, that accompanied his birth or the miracles that stunned his onlookers as he roamed the countryside teaching and preaching. I don't mean the star that guided the wise men, the miracle of that. Uh, I mean, given who he was, the miracle of his coming to live among us at all the King of glory living in our midst, God in the flesh, God made visible, God made human. There's even a voice from heaven. The story set on the banks of the Jordan River in Palestine is interestingly, and I never thought of it until one of the commentators I read pointed this out. This is the only time in the Bible when all three persons of the Trinity can be seen and heard at once. According to Matthew, Jesus saw how, as he says, the heavens were open to him, to Jesus, and he saw the Spirit of God descending and alighting on him. And then, then he hears the voice of his Father, that Son, Spirit, now the Father, speaking from heaven. This is my Son, my Beloved. In Mark's version, the voice says, You are my Beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. So we see them all here in, in one place, so to speak. The three members of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, carrying on a conversation, being in communion with one another. It's a great glimpse. The miracles that started at Jesus' birth continue now as he's baptized, right there in the Jordan. Not Now, the miraculous has very much to do, though, with the mundane. It's not as flashy as the angels appearing in a burst of radiance. I mean, I've seen the Jordan River. I've been to Israel. I've seen the river where Jesus was baptized. It's not like the teal, serene blue of the Caribbean. No, the water is greenish brown. To be baptized would have been humbling, maybe even cold. When Jesus comes to John the Baptist expecting to be baptized, John, not surprisingly, protested. But Jesus insisted. John plunged Jesus into the brown water, just like every other needy, sinful person who came to Jesus, who came to John, except Jesus wasn't sinful, but the sinless Son of God humbled himself, joining sin-sick humanity in this public act, becoming even more fully connected with our human condition. And that word baptize, the word baptize itself says so much. To baptize, it wasn't about sprinkling little droplets of water. To baptize literally means to immerse something, to plunge it under the water. So Jesus hereby joins our condition all in, plunged into who we are and, what, what, and the mess we've made of the world here. It's the miracle 
of a God who would become vulnerable, a, a powerful, infinitely powerful God who in a way becomes weak, subject to human frailties. Jesus submitting to the waters tells us this season of Epiphany, how he came to fully identify with those he came to save. God didn't hold himself aloof. Jesus did not stand back on the banks of the river. No, he went in. But we are people who do more than look back on a miraculous visitation because, because of what hap happened, we also look ahead as people of miraculous expectation. And I love that phrase, that we're people of miraculous expectations. I heard it from the former bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of Texas years ago, and it's, it stuck with me because what a great antidote to mediocre expectations to dulled expectations, instead, miraculous expectations. Because of what's happened in Christ, we become a people, not of negativism, a people saturated, filled with hope. And I don't mean this only for our individual lives. I mean it for us as a church, too. We can believe that God will use our efforts in ways that maybe we can't quite see yet or imagine today's a great day i want you to have our hopes refreshed because epiphany and the baptism of our lord means that more is possible than we first thought right in the thick of where we are amid all of those limitations here comes the shining presence of the lord himself this means we we dare some new things it means we don't get stingy with hope. It means we see possibilities instead of doom. It means there can be a new joy in what we do, a new, a new sense of what's possible, even in the ordinary. Forty years ago, a Philadelphia congregation watched as three nine-year-old boys were baptized, joining the church, and not long after that, Unable to continue with its dwindling membership, the church sold the building, they disbanded. One of those boys baptized was Dr. Tony Campolo, an author, really a renowned speaker. I've read some of his books. I heard him speak. He's a dynamo. And Campolo remembers how years later, he was doing research on, his, uh, on the archives of his denomination, and, and he decided to look up his church where he was baptized, the report for the year of that congregation, the year he was baptized. And he said, there was my name and Dick White's. He's now a missionary. And there was the name of Bert Newman, a professor of theology at an African seminary. He was there too in the report. And then he says, I read the church report for my year that said, it's not been a good year for our church. We've lost 27 members. Three joined and they were only children. Only children. Who could have known? God had great things in store. One of my favorite scenes in the Disney Pixar movie, The Incredibles, which I just think is a brilliant movie. One of my favorite scenes is the one in which Bob Parr, you know, the middle-aged suburban dad, he's pulling into his driveway after a boring day at work. His, his life has grown routine. And he, as he pulls into the driveway, he looks over and there next to him is a neighborhood boy watching him. And Bob says to him, with obvious irritation, what are you waiting for? And the kid looks back at him and says, something amazing. And Bob softens and says wistfully, me too, kid. Me too. Something amazing. Well, the amazing has come to meet us 
in Jesus Christ. He came to live among us. He, came, he comes to live in us. And when he comes to, uh, when it comes to the impact he has through us on our community, our wider culture, oh, so much can happen. Miraculous expectations mean we can look ahead. No, a discouragement. Well, maybe there'll be moments of that, but also with imagination. And we look around with imagination. We can believe that God will use our efforts here in this place, the class we attend. Who knows? We might have an insight that carries us on the rest of the week or maybe for the next year or the check we write. The good it will do. The young life will baptize, which we'll do later this month, yet another baptism. The creative effort we are making as a community, the plans we're making to host and resettle a family from another country, from Ukraine. God went to daring, miraculous links to join our world, to become one of us. There is no telling now to what lengths he will go to use us in his good purposes. Amen. The Nicene Creed is found in the prayer book on page 358. Let us affirm the great truths of our Christian faith with joy and anticipation. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people, form four. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant almighty God that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good, especially Joseph, our president, Glenn, our governor, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours. Grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We pray for first responders, medical workers, educators, those in law enforcement. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles. Bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray for relatives, friends, and members of our parish, for those we love, those close to us, those far. You may name now those for whom you would pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor using the prayer of confession found in the prayer book on page 360, beginning with a time of silent, quiet confession. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways for the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.